This started out with Clinton, but was implemented in Obama's term, his last term, and let's not forget what this administration has done and wants to continue to do with Kamala. President Putin has warned the West not to cross what he called a red line with Russia, stating that it would trigger an asymmetrical, rapid and harsh response. Mr Putin's comments during his State of the Nation address came at a time of increased tensions with the West, and as supporters of the jailed opposition figure, Alexei Navalny, staged protests against Mr Putin's rule. Our Moscow correspondent, Steve Rosenberg, sent this report. A touch of pop. Then, cue the president. This was Vladimir Putin's 17th State of the Nation address. He used it to portray his country as a besieged fortress, threatened by the West. And he warned, don't mess with Russia. I hope no one will cross Russia's red line. But in each case, we are the ones who will decide where the red line is. Organizers of any provocation threatening our security will regret it, like they haven't regretted anything for a long time. But is it Moscow that's the threat? The US and NATO say they're concerned by Russian troop movements and a military build-up near Ukraine. Why didn't they talk about what's really important to all of us? Do me a favor and take a breath. Don't scroll. Watch the numbers I'm going to give you. A lot of you on the left are arguing about emotion. A lot of you on the right are arguing that it's about, hey, four years ago, this, that, and the other. Let's get real numbers that you can now sink your teeth into. If you're on the left, you're going to find out exactly what Harris Biden have done. If you're on the right, you're going to find out exactly what Trump did. This is not a chart I made up. This is an actual chart put together based on the Federal Reserve, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the Energy Information Agency, and the NASDAQ. These are real numbers that you can sink your teeth into, that you can take to work and show them at the water cooler, that you can have after dinner if there's an argument about politics. Let's just take the emotion out and talk about numbers. The inflation rate year over year under Trump, 1.89%. Under Biden-Harris, 5.28%. Inflation cumulative, 7.8% higher under Trump, 19.2% higher under Biden-Harris. Average gas price under Trump down 5.4% to $2.49 average, up 46.6% under Biden-Harris, $3.50 average. 30-year mortgage rates down 34.8% under Trump, 3.86% average, up 132% under Biden-Harris, 5.45% average if you can get a mortgage. Average rent costs up 11.8% under Trump, up 21.6% under Biden-Harris. NASDAQ Composite was up 138.2% under Trump, up 39.4% under Biden-Harris. Grocery prices up 6.5% under Trump, up 20.9% under Biden-Harris. Electricity prices were up 4.2% under Trump, up almost 30% at 29.6% under Biden-Harris. And real hourly wages, a big indicator, up almost 7% under Trump, 6.8%, down 2.2% under Biden-Harris. These are real numbers that I didn't make up. These are numbers you can go and research and verify. These are numbers that are based on July 12, 2024. The jobs numbers, of course, got worse since then with a readjustment down by about a million jobs. Now, get emotional if you want and complain about somebody's hair or how they tweet or whatever or their age. Or you can actually look at numbers and decide who was the better CEO, who was the better person in charge. Because Harris is no different than Biden, except she's a little more progressive, more liberal on policies, which will cost everybody even more money should she win. Any questions on this, make sure that you post them right here. Make sure you share this, and I appreciate you staying till the end of the video. It's important that we have real knowledge, and that's what I just gave you. Come on!
Because had Joe Biden signed off on the proposal that Keir Starmer, the prime minister of the United Kingdom, brought in to greenlight the use of storm shadow cruise missiles and American attack missiles against targets inside Russia, we'd all be dead because it would have triggered a nuclear war. The Russians said, from Vladimir Putin to the ambassador of the United Nations to the Russian ambassador here in the United States, that this would be an act of war. In fact, the Russian ambassador at the United Nations, in session with the Security Council, said it will be a declaration of war. And I believe there was a back-channel communication because all of that wasn't resonating. There was a final back-channel communication, the content of which I don't know, but I think I know. And I think they said, these are the targets we're going to hit. And the decision's been made. If you do this, this is automatic. You can't stop it. That's why Biden was so mad. Did you see him at his, when you get ready to meet with Starmer? Because he was ready. They were ready. They had it all together. Starmer brought the big red box with all the documents. They were going to sign off on this thing. Because Russia's bluffing. Russia's bluffing. Russia's bluffing. Russia wasn't bluffing. And someone said, what do you think about Putin's thing? I don't give much mind to Putin. Look at that angry old man. You know why he was angry? Because he was humiliated by the Russians. But this isn't about humiliation. What it's about is that a man named Volodymyr Zelensky has put political pressure on the United States, Great Britain, and NATO to allow him to do something that everybody knows will tr- has the potential of triggering a nuclear war. And they almost did it. They almost signed off on it. We almost all died this weekend. Do you understand that? I don't think people understand it. 72 minutes is all it takes from the initiation of the first action to the end of the world. 72 freaking minutes. I just, I've never seen any population treated the way Americans are being treated by their leaders now. And I'm very worried that at some point people will be like, I'm not putting up with this. I don't know why anybody pays taxes in this country. For the record, I'm not counseling not pay your taxes because I don't want to get arrested. But I just don't understand the consent level in this country is still incredibly high. Maybe we're just like moving through the motions or something. All the good people are the people they lecture and call names. And because they are good people, they're dutiful people and they just do what they think they're supposed to do. But I don't know why they're doing it. Why would you send a dollar to people who laugh over your death. Your nephew dies of fentanyl and they don't care and you're still sending the money? I don't get that, honestly. The answer though, Tucker, is because they've done a successful pattern of show trials. Oh, I know. And and no, this is a real thing. Why do I still pay taxes and you? Obviously, because we have friends in federal prison. Like Steve Bannon right now is in federal prison for not committing a crime. They do this, by the way, to chill the population, to remind you that, that your door could get knocked on next. Ad that the Trump campaign has just released, maybe the shortest campaign ad in history, in which sees Harris confirm both of these points. A, lo- a loaf of bread cost 50% more today than it did before the pandemic. Ground beef is up almost 50%. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. <laughs> Wow. You, you know, they said I must endorse Kamala for president. I, I believe she's more of an idiot than I am. So tonight, I'm asking every American to vote for Trump. To make America so, to make America great again. What do you think about it? Now listen to your bitches. Throw me one of those MAGA hats. Vote Trump and make America great. You know, you know, you know the thing. Wow. Right. Keep me covered. What with? Well, just keep me covered. Too late. What? There he is. Where? There. What, behind the rabbit? 
Is there any? You silly sod. What? You got us all worked up. Well, that's no ordinary rabbit. Oh. That's the most foul, cruel and bad-tempered rodent you ever set eyes on. You tit. I saw my arm and I was so scared. Look, that rabbit's got a vicious street a mile wide. It's a killer. Get stuck. It'll do you a, a treat, mate. Oh, you yeah? Manky Scots git. I'm warning you. What's he do? Nibble your bum? He's got huge, sharp... Uh, he can leap about. Look at the bones. Go on, boys. Chop his head off. Right, silly little beater. One rabbit suit coming right up. Look. Jesus Christ! I warned you. I've done it again. I warned you, but did you listen to me? Oh, no, you knew it all, didn't you? Oh, it's just a harmless little bunny, isn't it? Well, it's always the same. I always oh, tell shut them, up. do they listen to me? Hi. Oh, no. Shut up! We have the Holy Hand Grenade. Yes, of course. The Holy Hand Grenade of Antioch. It is one of the sacred relics Brother Maynard carries with him. Brother Maynard, bring up the Holy Hand Grenade. Pie Jesu Domine, Dona Eis Requiem. 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 How does it, um, how does it work? I know not, my liege. Consult the Book of Armaments. Armaments, Chapter 2, verses 9 to 21. And Saint Attila raised the hand grenade up on high, saying, O Lord, bless this thy hand grenade, that with it thou mayst blow thine enemies to tiny bits in thy mercy. And the Lord did grin, and the people did feast upon the lambs, and sloths, and carp, and anchovies, and orangutans, and breakfast cereals, and fruit bats, and large... Give a bit, brother. And the Lord spake, saying, First shalt thou take out the holy pin, then shalt thou count to three, no more, no less. Three shall be the number thou shalt count, and the number of the counting shall be three. Four shalt thou not count, neither count thou two, excepting that thou then proceed to three. Five is right out. Once the number three, being the third number, be reached, then lobbest thou thy holy hand grenade of Antioch towards thy foe, who, being not in my sight, shall snuff it. No, Amen. 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 Right. One, two, five! Three, sir! Three! Oh.